Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you here. It's good to see you all at home, too. It's good to have you here on this, on this um, second Sunday of Advent, which is Peace Sunday. And if, I, if you will turn to the back of your bulletin, there are a few announcements. We will resume Seekers this week from 6 to 8, but we will have it over in the Parsonage meeting room instead of downstairs in the fellowship hall. It's nice to meet over there. It's, 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 it's comfy over there. Um, the Gallatin County Community Choir will perform our Christmas program at 3 p.m. on Sunday, December the 19th. And following our program, we will have a reception downstairs, so we'll get to have some fun downstairs afterwards. Um, and I did want to announce the Gallatin County Heritage Center, the Gallatin County Historical Society, will host a holiday sing-along beginning at 7 p.m. on December the 16th. And everyone here is invited to to join along. They need lots of, it's lots of fun. They have sing a long time and they have a good time and everybody's invited. Do we have any more announcements out there? Yes. yes. Okay. Great. What Molly said, after we have our um, community choir sing along, they're going to have a and have our reception downstairs. We're going to have a live nativity for the children over at the Catholic Church. Is that correct? It's yes. For it's for everyone, but the, but the children will be giving it. We're putting on the live nativity. Are we going to have a petting? Yes. yes. And they have some animals there to pet and everything. It'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Hope you can make it out that Sunday afternoon. That's Sunday, December the 19th. Again, starts at 3 o'clock. And I did want to remind you, if you didn't pick it up last Sunday, downstairs on the table in the floor, when you come in, there's a couple Advent booklets left. If you, they're meditation booklets that help you um, have a silent time during, during Advent, getting ready for Christmas time. If we have no further announcements, if you please stand, we'll have our invocation. Dear loving God, as we gather on this second Sunday of Advent, Peace Sunday. We focus on peace today. We sure need peace in our world right now. Peace in our world, peace in our community, peace in our hearts. Open our eyes and open our hearts to receive that peace, for we need it each and every day of our lives. Not just today, not just during Christmas time, but every day. We need peace, that peace that silent peace every day. It helps us get through the day. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with you. That is a strong statement to make for there is much war going on right now in our world. But yet we can bring peace. You bring that perfect peace to us. And each and every Sunday that we gather, we pray the Lord's Prayer. The, the Lord's Prayer offers us peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our souls. Let's now repeat, have the Lord's Prayer together. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will now have our children's moments. If the children will gather around, I know we might get to make children today, but people gather around your TV set or your phone or your tablet, turn on the TV or your TV set, and we will have our 
Okay, now they can hear me okay. Yes, I'll start all over again. It's good to see you all this we don't have many children here, but it's good to see, have you at home. And you, if you would gather around your TV set, you can come on up. It's okay. You, you're welcome to join us. But what, we're, what I was going to talk about today, and I'm going to hold this up for everyone to see, because I know you're not here today, but on our bulletin, it has, a, it has um, the word peace. Today is Peace Sunday. That's our second Sunday of Advent. And peace is a very special time. I was going to ask you what peace meant to you. Peace means different things to many, to all of us. Peace is a silent time, time meditation time. It calms your heart. And it brings peace, you, peace to the person that's, um, when you're experiencing lonely times, sad times, pray to God. Pray at those silent times. You can pray for peace in your heart. And you feel that peace. That peace will overwhelm us. I don't mean to say overwhelm us, but that peace will be with us and it will flow through our bodies times that we need it. Can we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Dear God, please be with us this week. As we go through this week, in the hustle, in the bustle, there's all kinds of things going on around us. But yes, we need that peace, that perfect peace in our hearts each and every day. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. We will now have the lighting of our Advent candle. Oh, we didn't. I'm very sorry. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number, and I know it's, it's a very special time. It's O Come All Ye Faithful. If you'll stand and sing our hymn of praise, it's number 148, O Come All Ye Faithful. We'll sing all, all verses of O Come All Ye Faithful. Thank you, Shirley.
Now we will have the, the lighting of our Advent wreath, Advent candle. But first I have a scripture to read to you. It is from the, the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, verses 1 through 10. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth, of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Our lists are long, even in this strange mess where we live these days, and we want to do it right. We want to be safe, but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and prepare the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith, that the God we worship is not far from us, and that we may clear the way for God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith. The company is coming. Today we relight the candle of hope, and light the candle of peace. Let's join in singing the second stanza of, ver of um, When Candle is Lit, Psalm 128, and I will light the candles while we sing. Jan Thornton, Patsy Lillard. Patsy needs our prayers, I know. I'm going to say it again. Horace Rising Horace has some tests this week, and Horace needs our prayers. Simidor Kirky, Chad Walker, Randy McDonald is Bill McDonald's daughter. She was in the hospital. She had, um, she had pneumonia. Is that correct? Pneumonia. Yes, but she's home now, and she, but she still needs our prayers. The family of Craighorn, that's Kathy, Kathy Tressler's, is that your cousin, Kathy? It's my husband's nephew. Okay. We need to remember that family in prayer. And also remember our frontline health care workers and emergency service workers and all the educators out there. 
They all need to be remembered in our prayers. Do we have any other prayer requests? If we have no other requests, we want to pause for a moment of silent meditation. Will you pray with me? Lord God of surprise endings, miracle maker, peace giver. Lord, we admit it this morning, our, our world is a mess, still. When we prayed last year on Peace Sunday, we had maybe had hope in our hearts that something miraculous would happen and that this season would find us at peace everywhere. And so, Lord, at this time of Advent on Peace Sunday, we now ask for presence. We ask for your presence with us. Now, yes, Lord, we, we need good leaders. We need sacrificial benefactors. We, we need teachers and proclaimers. But most of all, Lord, we need you to be with us. And how wonderful it is that that is precisely what Christmas is all about. You coming to us just when we needed you most. Lord, if there's any doubt about our purpose in living, if any of us have been wondering, if there's any doubt about where we should do your work, what we should do, all we really need to do is read the news on our screens or our papers listen to our TVs or radios or podcasts. All we need to do is just look around and see. Forgive our hesitancy to get involved, Lord. Soothe our fears. Reinvigorate our tired minds, hearts, bodies. And make clear to us that you are asking us to help you to do your work work. And we owe you that, Lord. You know, it seems like no coincidence that the season of anticipation comes right after the season of thanksgiving, because thankfulness progresses towards response. Lord, you've heard our prayers from our lists and from our hearts. Touch these lives with strength inwardly as well as outwardly. And Lord, help us to hear your list. Thank you, Lord God, creator of the universe, for also creating this spot, your church, where we can feel close to you and share your love with each other. Bless this church, Lord God, and all its ministries and all those who minister on its behalf. Surprise us again this Christmas, Lord, with your appearance. Come to us in unexpected ways and in suddenly inspiring routines and traditions. We await your coming, Christ-giver, Holy Lord. For it is in the name of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. wonderful song for us, Christmas song for us, O Little Town of Bethlehem. But first, I wanted to, um, 
I wanted to say to you, we welcome, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Diane, excuse me. I'm sorry, Diane. But first, I wanted to mention to you that the beautiful poinsettias up here are in honor of Bill and Mary Evelyn Beverly. Donna Hughes donated those to our church in memory of her parents, and I, they're, they're just beautiful. They make our sanctuary beautiful. And I just wanted to be sure and mention that because I didn't mention it during prayer time. But if you'll go ahead, you can go ahead, Diana. Thank you. When I was researching songs to sing for the second advent, lighting of the second advent candle, one of the songs that came up was O Little Town of Bethlehem because in some of the research I found, the second candle is also referred to as the candle of Bethlehem because it was predicted that the Christ would be born in Bethlehem. So that's why I chose O Little Town of Bethlehem. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wondering love. O morning stars together, proclaim thy holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to men on earth. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Diana. That was just wonderful. And it also helps that it's one of my favorite, if not my all-time favorite, Christmas carols. So I knew you were thinking about me when you uh, chose that one, right? Of course, even though we'd never met before. <laughs> Gosh, it's great to be back with you all again. It's been a long two years since I've been able to be here and uh, be in your graceful presence your sanctuary looks beautiful. Well, heck, you all look beautiful. All right, it's great to see you. I haven't had a chance to say hi to everybody. I, Laura hadn't said hi to you yet. <laughs> That's quite all right. And Brady, I missed you a minute ago. And Bobby, I didn't see it. See you or Abby. Uh, it's great uh, to... Yeah, we, we were sneaking. Sneaking around, in and out. Right. <laughs> it's just wonderful to be back with you, and especially during the season of Advent. Uh, my appreciation to uh, Phil to uh, issue me the invitation to come and fill the pulpit for him. I have a, a lot of respect and love for Phil. Uh, he and I go back a long, long way together, 
Uh, and I just I think that you all are very fortunate that he has been your minister, and I think he is very fortunate to have found a congregation uh, such as you all. It's a great blessing that goes two ways. The prophet in the scriptures that is most frequently associated with Christmas time is the prophet Isaiah. Uh, and that's because of all the prophecies about the coming of a Messiah that fit so well with the birth of Jesus Christ and with the ministry of Jesus Christ. And so we turn to the 40th chapter of Isaiah during this Advent season, and we hear not a prophecy about the coming of a Messiah, but a command to each of us that we have a job to do. And I share with you Isaiah 40. We're going to read the first 11 verses. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. And surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings, and lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for the people of God. The eighth grade campers that were part of my group that summer gathered for the first time at the campsite that had been assigned to us. You see, at the, these eighth grade group of campers, they, we were given a, a home in the woods site, and we had to prepare it and work it and build it so that we could spend the week there in the woods at this work site with benches and tables and all these things that we would have to find ourselves somehow. So anyway, we were there on the very first day of camp, and we had gathered in our particular assigned site, and I got to tell you that it was sloped so radically that it was all that the kids could do to sit on the fallen logs without rolling off on down the hillside. And so they clung with tenuous grip to their slanted seats, and they griped, and they griped, and they griped, and when I'd had just about enough of their griping, I said to them, to these ten pouting adolescents, when you come back from dinner tonight at the mess hall, I want you to bring your spoons back with you. I said to them, we are going to dig out 
this hillside until it's flat. You should have seen the looks in their eyes. They looked at me like, who is this crazy man? I mean, a bulldozer and a team of lumberjacks couldn't have made that site flat. It would have taken years of work. But this crazy counselor thought a bunch of kids with spoons could do it. What had they gotten themselves into? We need comfort, you know. We need comfort. I was pulling out of my driveway one day. I happened to notice out the car window that my neighbor was coming towards me. and She had leaflets in her hands and she had tears in her eyes. Her cat had escaped. A house cat, never been outside alone before. And it was cold, and it was getting colder. I took one of her leaflets, and I gave her a hug in return. And even though there were many humans, many humans, cold and alone and in great need, still I offered to pray for this woman's cat. She needed comfort. Those of you who have pets, who have had pets, maybe know what she was feeling at the time. She needed comfort. When my dad's younger sister died near Christmas time, at age 91, my dad just couldn't make the three-hour drive uh, to where his sister's funeral was going to be. Another of their sisters had to stay at home to take care of a seriously ill husband. The remaining sister could no longer drive at all. And at age 87, Dad's young brother in California just couldn't come home for the service. And so not a single sibling was at the funeral to honor this one who had brightened their lives so much. My dad and his siblings needed comfort there at Christmas, as time had finally caught up with them. A friend, currently going through some very serious trials and tribulations, told me that he had received a call from another friend who said to him, I'm praying for you. And I never pray, so I hope I'm doing it right. <laughs> comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. People in the rubble of Aleppo, Syria, are facing kidnappings and terrorist attacks and winter without the protection of homes that were destroyed and continued to be destroyed by continuing airstrikes there, even all these years later. People in the small rustic forest community of Grizzly Flat, California. There's a name you don't hear often. People in that little community near Lake Tahoe are finding that after the wildfires went through, there's not much left of their community. They are scratching through the debris just to find one beloved photo or any reminder of what they previously had known as home. American soldiers have been withdrawn from Afghanistan but are still operating against armed groups from Iraq to Syria to Yemen to the Philippines to Niger risking their lives and risking moral injury because of the things that they are commanded to do. Common citizens of Iraq and Yemen and Myanmar and Somalia and Gaza and Israel and other nations are caught between armed thugs and power-hungry factions and mercenaries and foreign-occupying armies. Haiti, oh, Haiti. Haiti is an encyclopedia of plagues, all wrapped up in one small island. 
What hope is there for any of these on this Peace Sunday, 2021? Dare we hope that their suffering might be relieved? Dare we suggest to all these people that a brighter day is coming? Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. The new CEO had just completed his tour of the company's headquarters and operations. And with anticipation and anxiety, the current company executives asked, well, what do you think? What needs to be changed? And the CEO replied, everything. Everything. And that's what Isaiah is implying in this beautiful passage from Isaiah 40. Everything in this world needs to be changed. Every valley has to be raised up level. Every mountain, every hill has to be leveled off. Any uneven ground must be smoothed out, and any rocky rough has to be turned into a meadow. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. You know, when the heavy rains would hit the town of Asheville, North Carolina, where my son and his wife and their daughter lived, the water would run down the hillsides behind their home, and they would, it would run right up to the garage and into the garage. And they had to do something about this water that came with every heavy rain. And so they decided the only thing to do was to dig the ground away from the side of the garage and to build a retaining wall. Do you know how much dirt you have to remove in order to dig out a space four feet wide and 30 feet long? It's a lot of dirt. Casey and Melissa could tell you how much it is. I'll tell you, just correcting a slight slope in your yard can take weeks of work causing aches and pains in places you didn't even know you had. Just the thought of it is overwhelming. And that's why we tend to procrastinate on all those yard projects and garden projects because we're just too overwhelmed by the thought to ever get started on them. And we, God's people, we are supposed to correct all the wrongs in the world, to smooth out all the rough places, to dig out all the barriers, that's too much. It's too much, Lord. You're asking too much of us. And yet God calls to us in this Advent season, comfort. Oh, comfort my people. God knows we aren't up to it. <laughs> I mean, you heard it in the scripture there, didn't you? All people are grass. Uh, their constancy is like the flowers of the field. Well, you know what the flowers look like right now, don't you? We were gone for three weeks to Texas, and when we got back on the 23rd of November, what had been blooming when I left was suddenly completely withered to a crisp even. Yet, we're not very constant. We wither and we fade but the scriptures tell us that God is forever. And Isaiah tells us to make a Christmas announcement to the world. Ta-da! Here is your God. It's Christmas. Christ is born. The eternal God has come to earth to set things right. See, the Lord comes with might, the scripture says. I mean, look at this baby and recognize the face of God. Why, he looks just like the Almighty. See the love in his eyes? See the concern on his brow? Look how he lived. Listen to what he said. 
This is the mysterious God made plain to us. This is the unknowable creator now known clearly. This is what God is like. This is what you and I are to be like. This is Christ our King. Come, let us adore Him. That's the announcement. That's the message that God wants us to give to the world. And what that message teaches us is this. If the greatest enigma of all time, the mystery of God, of who God is, if that greatest enigma can be unraveled in the person of a carpenter from Nazareth, then maybe, just maybe the valleys can be lifted up. Maybe. Just maybe the, the hills and the obstacles can be leveled off for all of God's people in the world. Our first hymn this morning, O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. It's important that we remember that order. Faithful, joyful, triumphant. Because first, we have to be faithful. And then we can be joyful and triumphant. Comfort, O comfort my people. That's what God is asking us to do on this Peace Sunday of 2021. And how we respond to that request determines how faithful we really are. But we exclaim, why this crazy God? What have we gotten ourselves into believing in this cosmic lunatic? I mean, how can we shelter the Syrian people? How can we rebuild Haiti or Grizzly Flat? How can we untangle the Sunni, Shiite mess that has been plaguing the Middle East for 1,500 years? How can we stop wars or, or bring back to prominence the, uh, the concept of truth or, or get people to think universally instead of provincially and selfishly? How can we do anything about someone else's addiction or disease? or poverty? How can we clear mountains and fill valleys when all we have are spoons? I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know how we can do it. But then again, I'm not God. Advent is all about potential and amazement. Christmas, Christmas tells us that God steps in to make the routine spectacular, to make the impossible real. What we're asked to do is to believe, to believe and not let the scope of the task disillusion us. In spite of bullets whizzing around our ears, in spite of hatred entrenched in government systems across the globe, I still believe in a day when all the world will be at peace. I still believe that. Not just a ceasefire, but a whole new reality. Not just a time where we are absent of war, but a time when we are present with peace and love. When our armies will busy themselves building new homes for wildfire and flood victims instead of shooting at each other. When nuclear power will be a, a tool to save the environment and not a threat of annihilation. When brothers and sisters will not lift up arms against each other, but will instead lift up arms to embrace each other in a common humanity. I believe in that day. And I intend to keep on believing in it for the rest of my life. I intend to keep that faith. 
And I invite you to join me in that faith. The Kentucky River flooded Frankfurt in 1977. A man named Hub stood on his front porch in downtown Frankfurt. Mud filled his basement. Water stains were five feet high on his living room walls. A van full of church, of church folks, of our folks from our congregation, a van full of us arrived with shovels and mops and buckets and determination. And after a long, long, nasty work day, most of the mud and debris had been cleared from Hub's home. Hub stood on that front porch as we departed, and, and he quietly thanked us. And as I walked past him, he grabbed my arm and he said, I had just about given up hope. Well, in this year of 2021, so had I. In the face of all the things that have confronted our people, our country, our world, so had I. I had just about given up hope. But then I remembered that the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord, and He shall reign forever and ever. How could it ever happen? It can happen by the power of an awesome God who is at work in our world. And what we are required to do is to bring our spoons back from the mess hall and to dig where we're instructed. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Amen. Before we have our hymn of invitation, it is my invitation to all of you at home, anyone who would want to accept Jesus in their heart, to accept Jesus at this moment. For that is a wonderful, comforting thing. As Bill talked with us today, comfort. Christmas time offers a comfort in the words and the songs that we hear around us. And the way that our hearts are open, we can react to many different people. Again, you are invited to have Jesus come into your heart. As we sing our hymn of invitation, which is hymn number 153, if you please stand, we'll sing, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, verses 1, 2, and 4 of 153. Thank you. 
We come to the time that the, we're gathered around the Lord's table. Everyone is invited to gather around the Lord's table, everyone here, everyone at home. We ask you to use whatever emblems you have at home. That will be fine. The main thing is to remember Jesus' great sacrifices he gave for us. And these emblems, doesn't make any difference what they are. We use bread and grape juice. As we partake that bread and grape juice, they are food for our souls. And that helps us get through until we meet again. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for communion. You bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather around your table, in your house, with your people, to pause, to re restart our lives week in and week out, to clean our hearts out of all the trash and rubbish, because we know that no matter how hopeless or how broken, all things can be fixed through you. And we celebrate that here at the table. We celebrate the life, the death, the resurrection, the forgiveness that flows from it, though undeserved, by the grace of you, our Lord. And it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. And on that night, when they were gathered in the upper room and Jesus was eating with the disciples, he took the bread and he blessed it. And he broke it. And he passed it among them and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread together. In a like manner, Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, and he passed it among his disciples, saying, Take drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And remember, as often as you eat the bread and you do drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us partake of the heavenly fruit together, and remember Jesus. Let us pray. Dear loving God, we have heard wonderful music today, wonderful message, and we have seen some bright, sunny faces today. It may not be bright and sunny outside, but it's bright and sunny in our hearts. During this Christmas time, let us pause during the hustle and the bustle. There's so much going on around us, but let us remember let us focus on, on you and the, the fact that Jesus came to this world. He's the light of our lives. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we stand for the benediction, I want to be sure and, um, and ask everyone and every able-bodied person, the community choir, we're going to start our practice up here on Tuesdays. And I, we just need a couple people to stay after church so we can get our chairs. They're underneath the podium back there where Sarah is. And we can get them up here and we can have a place to practice Tuesday. So, for, so that's what I, first I wanted, first and foremost I wanted to say that. And also I wanted to thank Bill again. It's wonderful to see Bill during this Christmas time. It's wonderful to see him anytime. And I did want to, I didn't say this earlier, but it had been planned with Phil for quite a few, quite a few weeks that, that Bill would come and, and share with us. So it's been wonderful to have you here. If everyone would stand, we'll please hear our benediction. And now, may the peace that passeth all understanding go with us each and every day of our lives. Not just today, every day. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen.
not in that able-bodied category.